What's up, everybody? My name is Lihua, and welcome to the Super Kuna channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host a podcast across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lihua Super Kuna. Today, we are reviewing Dungeon Black Company. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. If you like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Dungeon Black Company episode 4, and this has been the most suspenseful episode like they give us little bits of information and we don't really know what it fully is until later on like in the beginning we saw Nino Mia he encountered the people he owed money to they're like oh you owe us five million dollars you have one month to give it to us and we're like yo how is he gonna do this is this episode going to be about that then later on when Shia is teaching him about defeating monsters and what parts to take to get rewards and such. He saw that Wanibe's tail regrew. I don't know when it came off in the other episodes, but apparently it regrew. And Wanibe said, oh, it just regrows like around this time. Like it always regrows. And that's when something clicked in Nino Mia's head. He's like, oh, we can farm animal parts or not animal parts. That sounds horrible. Beast parts monster parts monster parts it's like we can farm monster parts <laughs> and so they have like a little animal farm <laughs> and you just take off that part and then wait for it to regrow and then take it off again and Nina Mia was able to pay off his debt so he has one less dress off then we have Shia apparently Shia has a story I thought that she was brainwashed and that's why her eyes were kind of like starry like that but apparently her eyes were already like that and the reason why she's so determined or she's so was it obsessed she's a little obsessed with working is because of her dad she was a little traumatized from her dad going on adventures a lot her family being laughed at and her family not having enough money which is interesting so they said that her dad was called king failed ventures and i'm wondering like why is he called failed ventures because he went on adventures he cleared out dungeons and i'm like thinking is, why is that bad i don't get that i'm going to think that we're going to get more information about this later on because it seems like in this world, adventurers normally work for the companies to clear out the dungeon so it's safe to mine Demon Knight. But it seems like Shia's dad was like, no, I just want to go through dungeons for fun. And it's like he did that for free. So Shia is doing exactly what her dad does, but she actually gets money for it, I think. And from there, from her little trauma with her dad, the company was able to brainwash her more. Like she had a weak mind. And yeah. Nino Mia seems to have got an idea on her. Like he researched on her and he figured that's how the company brainwashed her. And he was telling her, you are free. You are your own person, etc., etc., etc. And she's like, yeah, I'm free. And it totally looks like that she was just manipulated by him. <laughs> like, it sounded so aspiring and such. Like, I was feeling like, yeah, go she be free. But then when you think about Nino Mio's personality, it's like, was he really being sincere? I don't know. <laughs> He's so selfish. I feel like. He'll just say anything that will benefit him. Another thing that they show that like was a little tidbit information that was kind of explained later on was the company. So apparently the company was talking about that there's going to be a death march. And it seems like that's where a lot of monsters manifest in the dungeon and such. And there's this Majin that appears. Apparently, Shia was meant to be a sacrifice to this Majin goes after whoever has a lot of magic power because it needs to replenish and the heroes are the ones that have a lot of magic power i don't know how this process is but it looks like the company looks through their employees and makes them into a hero which is weird because 
how do you make someone into a hero? I thought someone was just, you know, a hero. Like, it was their birthright. They're just born with it. And you have to be really special for that. But it seems like they're artificially made. And when I say artificially made, they it means like anyone could be made into a hero. I'm wondering if you need specific qualifications. Like, for example, being able to grow your magic power. And now I'm wondering about the first hero because she is the second coming, right? She's the second hero. What about the first one? Was the first one like the legit kind or the manufactured kind? And if the hero title is just a title that you put on someone so their magic power can grow or whatever, is, are they fake heroes and there's an actual real hero someplace else? Is Neo Mia a hero? Not too sure. Maybe we'll find out later on. But it's crazy that they make these heroes to be sacrifices to these Majin that need to replenish magic power. I'm just wondering, were these Majins not meant to be defeated? And if so, why would you give it more magic power for it to get more powerful? Wouldn't it be harder to take down later on? Like, there's a lot of things that not making sense but it's really exciting to see and this show it sort of is really good at making you excited for it like for the action scenes for what's happening in the moment but if you think about that stuff where they said that heroes are meant to be sacrifices the majin is goes after the hero because they have a lot of magic power and then they eat the hero to replenish that magic power so it's like okay what happens to that Majin? It's still there. It's going to come back later on. Why are you keeping this thing alive? Then, oh my gosh, later on, when they do take down this Majin, no, she was not sacrificed. Rim actually defeated it. Rim was saying that it was incomplete and it was asking for help. So it's like, wait, what do you mean it's incomplete? Uh, it, it was like, like, what does it need to be complete? Was it still growing? Did it need more stuff to be added to it? Like, what? What? And I'm like wondering, was it supposed to be complete after it takes in the magic power? And the whole incomplete thing just makes me think that this Majin was man-made or it was manifested by the dungeon. So I'm like thinking, okay, where are these coming from? I thought the dungeon makes these monsters, right? But now it just seems like this particular Majin was not made by the dungeon. And it's, I got, I got questions again. Then we got Rim. Apparently her hair can change and look like her big monster form and that's how she defeated the Majin. Her hair just changed and like bit off this Majin's head. And it's like, yo, Rim, you are pretty OP. No wonder you show up towards the end of battles, huh? You gotta make these people work for it. You gotta give us a show. And then you're like, okay, show is done. Let's finish it. Kill it off. Now I'm wondering what Rem really is. It's a big mystery with her. And the thing is, we saw her in the beginning. I think she was found on the second floor, right? So it's like, okay, what was she doing on the second floor? I felt like the deeper you go down, the more powerful or challenging the monsters are. It's like, what was she doing up there? I'm pretty sure we'll learn more about her later on in the series. But besides that, the end of this episode, some type of artifact got activated and then a black with red lining portal opened up and just dropped Ninomiya and Rim in. The same portal thing that brought Ninomiya from his previous world to this world. So that was the end. It left with a cliffhanger and I'm like, where did they go? And that concludes this review of Dungeon Black Company episode 4. If there's anything that I didn't mention and you want to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this video. 
And if you haven't seen the episode, what's your impression of this episode from this video? If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord link. It's in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos like to stop by the stream. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where you talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehula, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Dungeon Black Company episode 4. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. Fist bump!